Welcome everyone to Cloud Delight YouTube channel and here is the place where we learn technology every day. So let's get started with our topic today that is AWS Landing Zone Part 1. So what all we are covering here is what is Landing Zone, why is Landing Zone very important, architecture, prerequisites that we need to know, how we implement them and what are the default features that comes as part of Landing Zone once we implement that. Now let's come to what is landing zone. Landing zone is a concept which emerged to have a well-architected multi-account environment which acts as a starting point for all further application deployments. It provides a baseline for multiple things like multi-account strategy, identity and access management, governance, data security, network design and logging. So why do we need landing zone? That is because it will make sure we follow certain mandatory best practices and we it is it will allow us to have the policy enforcements compliance centralized way for controlling and managing lot of things and different aspects of architectural requirements also will be done with the best practices in place so now this is the architecture which we will get to deploy the landing zone uh, this is the default one but on top of this customizations are allowed we have different accounts which are named in this architecture uh, each one of them has its own features and uh, importance which we will cover in later parts but for now uh, just uh, look into the architecture where we have an AWS account which we will call as a management account where we have all the service catalog account baseline single sign on organization and OUs created we will manage all the other accounts as the centralized account and that is called as a management account and we will create multi account strategy one of the accounts is shared services account log archive account security account and all the workload accounts if we have production development QA and stage environments each one of them will have different accounts as such so each account has its own importance as I said earlier we will cover each account as one uh, video where we will talk about the, those particular uh, account and its importance now always what happens is whenever we are starting off any new project the initial steps becomes very crucial and as part of project kickstart asking the right questions to customer to understand the environment and to proceed further with the implementation asking right questions becomes very important so as part of account management we need to ask series of questions to customers so that we implement the same as customer expects so is there any existing accounts already in use and uh, what accounts is identified as a management account for landing zone setup as i mentioned in the architecture diagram this becomes this is the management account where we have to have all the key components from which we manage all other accounts so we need to identify along with customer which account should be used as the management account and how many accounts or environments are in scope for implementation as I mentioned uh, shared services security log archive accounts are the default ones which we will talk about it but workload accounts when it comes to workload accounts it depends on the customers discretion whether they want to have dev QA stage and production accounts uh, or performance accounts to be added all these things to be discussed brainstormed and then come to a conclusion how many accounts or environments are required for each of the account creation uh, just like we create free tier account or any business account we would need an email id uh, that needs to be mapped to individual account so customer side they have to be prepared with email ids that they have to share it with us for our implementation purpose so these are some of the key, some of the key uh, questions that we need to ask and get the answers from customer the next thing is on the networking. Uh, networking is the uh, baseline or the basic requirement for any of the applications to grow further onto a complex architecture. Now with respect to uh, networking, the key questions comes into uh, mind is, is it a multi VPC approach or a single VPC approach? 
any data center system exists, any communication between data center exists. This question is important because if you are aware, if we have different strategies where we connect to data center from cloud, it could be a site to site VPN, it could be a direct connect. So these are some of the things which we will have to have an information before we do the setup. Is there any sort of communication required uh, or is it a complete migration from data center to AWS? Uh, once we implement everything on AWS, it's just the AWS which is operating operating there is no communication so this clarity is required is there any specifications on vpc cider this is very very important because if they have any communication with data center they should provide the vpc ciders or we should provide the vpc ciders based on the uh, key uh, consideration that there should not be any overlapping so that consideration is very important so it is better to ask customer for the specifications now the next thing is identity and access management is there any existing user management or identity access uh, management system already like active directory or uh, ad setup all these things or an azure id is existing that we have we have to integrate so all these things is required to be uh, told by the customers for us to proceed further sso and mfa requirement uh, if they have already an existing sso or if they have any preferences for mfa that needs to be established all these things to be answered is there any requirement for custom permission sets uh, for different groups we will cover this as part of separate uh, uh, video where we talk about custom permission sets and uh, when it comes to security aspects we have n number of services uh, native to AWS where it provides a lot of security and compliance requirements whether it could be a uh, uh, PCI compliance uh, 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 HIPAA compliant all these things to be kept in mind before we configure the security services and we have to ask them whether they have any region restrictions where uh, security policies have to be enforced that no uh, deployment should happen on a specific region of AWS what are the regions that must be covered under governance say I have two uh, regions where I deploy the resources I want the security security enforcement on both the regions so they have to call out those regions is there any specifications for custom SCP to be enabled like region restrictions or uh, uh, repository deletions so th those are the some of the things which will be included as part of security implementation step steps uh, again we will walk you through on the entire implementation uh, practicals in the next coming uh, video uh, for now it's just on the theory part what we are covering for us to get started with the implementation once we implement what are the default features that gets enabled as part of landing zone is cloud trail management events captured in log archive account config recording is set to on so these are some of the topics which we will uh, cover up and this particular topic has lot of child topics which will come one by one as parts. So uh, until we meet again with the new topics, keep learning. Thank you.